Welcome to the Life Reimagined channel. I'm Brian. And I'm Amy. And we're a family that's been going full-time RVing for about nine months. We travel with our three youngest kids, and we're all about adventure, homeschooling, seeing what there is out there in the country to see, and we're hoping we can teach you some of the things that we've seen along the way and let you enjoy this journey along with us. So we're gonna to talk to you a little bit about how we make money on the road. Uh, my wife is a travel nurse. She is a neonatal intensive care nurse. So that's her specialty. I uh, do insurance and I also have a t-shirt business where we make our money. Uh, that's why we have this little fancy thing here behind us. We actually press t-shirts on the road. I have some uh, people that work for me back in our home state, but we do custom t-shirts for businesses and campgrounds and breweries and family reunions and anything you want. Uh, we'll put a link down below so you can see some of that stuff. You can order shirts. Um, that's, that helps support us and let us keep traveling. But the majority of money comes from my wife's travel nursing position. She works three days a week, three 12 hour days, which are awesome. So we typically get a lot of days off in between to allow us travel. But there, there are some ins and outs and specifics to travel nursing that you need to know some do's and don'ts and what to expect and what not to expect and she's going to go over some of that with you. So have you ever thought about being a travel nurse? Well there's so many things to think about when you first decide about taking this route. Um, the wonderful thing is is that you can travel around with your family. Many people do it um, by staying in Airbnbs. We decided to travel full-time in our fifth wheel. So what would it take to become a travel nurse? Well, first of all, you need to have several years of experience, at least one, but most likely a lot of agencies would like you to see two years of experience before going into this. And especially within the field that you're gonna be working in. So like Brian said, I do the newborn intensive care unit, um, or I also I can also do postpartum. So kind of gives me a little bit of a variety of what I can look for when submitting to jobs. So the easiest way to start off to become a travel nurse is if you can find a travel agency that you'd like to work with. We use Aya Healthcare and my recruiter's name is Madeline Merchant. We can put her information down below. Don't so worry, Madeline, we'll hit you up later for the fee. <laughs> <laughs> And so, um, so if you'd like to contact her, she's a great resource. She's been very well to work with um, with us. So, first of all, you'll go on to their website, and you can do all your application on there. They'll have you do a skills verification of what things you feel comfortable with in your area, and they kind of have you rate it from like zero or one to five, being what you're most comfortable with, and then what you are least comfortable with. And then um, they'll ask you for your license, any extra license that you need, like I have to have NRP certification, all those things they can handle up front. So once you give them those, um, then they have them on your file. So, so one thing I would say about the travel nursing positions is you will have to take tests. They do suck, uh, but it's part of the job. It, it's something you do, it takes a couple hours for, for each location. You, you're going to have to take a test most of the time for each new job you take. But it's just part of the job. Power through it. Whether you hate tests or not, just power through it. Do it. It's part of the job. My wife hates that part. I can't blame her because I don't have to take them. <laughs> but uh, just remember that. It's just to get you the job, to get you to the next destination so you can see the area. So, after you've done all your application to begin with, then you're going to want to come in and this is the fun part. You get to start looking for where you want to submit to. So you can go into Aya Healthcare's website. You can type in NICU nurse or whatever type of nurse um, field that you're in. And it will show you all the jobs that are available for the different areas around the country. So at this point, you can pick several different ones or you can just pick one. It just kind of depends on what you're comfortable with. We usually kind of narrow it down to like two or three. It also will tell you what their need is as far as day shift or night shift. Um, or sometimes they'll have it where you can do five days a week and some are just three days a week, 12 hour shifts. So it just kind of depends um, on what you're looking for. And usually the more flexibility that you have, the more likely that you're going to get the places that you're going to go. So we typically like to do three 12 hour shifts just because I can group them together. And then when we're off, it's their favorite time because then we go and explore. 
And so, um, so once you submit, then you becomes the hard part. It becomes the waiting part. So usually, typically, once you submit, either your recruiter will get notified if they're interested in an interview, or sometimes your recruiter won't even know and you'll just get a call. So typically, I get a call between around 24 to 48 hours after submission, but they can take up to five days or so um, to notify you back. So once you get the interview, this is your time to you know fill out them to see if it's somewhere that you're interested in going. Ask all your questions. We try to like really lay out questions to make sure that we remember to ask in the interview. Sometimes we forget, sometimes not, but usually you know this is the time to know if you're gonna have an offer or not so sometimes you'll get an offer by the time you know that you're off the phone you'll know that they're gonna send a contract to you or not but not always some of my friends have said that you know that they don't know and so they have to wait again to see if they get a contract um, sent through but I'm sure that you could ask the manager you know do you think that you're gonna be sending a contract to my agency not sure you know how that goes but I always I've known so far by the time I get off the phone if I'm gonna have a contract with them so then once they notify your agency that they're gonna extend a contract to you then it becomes again you know your time to decide on okay if I'm gonna get a contract here where am I gonna stay so you can take housing through your agency or you can take the money that they offer you for housing and you can find your own housing which is what we do and and that's one of the benefits to us because the way travel nursing works as long as you have a residence that you can use in your home state if you're in a different state the uh the housing allowance the meals allowances are your tax-free money and it can vary depending on your states and, and your housing situation but that's one of the biggest benefits to us because that's where the majority of the income comes from is that tax-free money for housing and meals allowances. So uh, we do review that carefully on the contract. Um, some contracts will give you clothing allowances. Some will give you uh, relocation allowances. It, it, it varies a little bit from agency to agency, but just read through that stuff in your contract. Make sure it's correct. Check it because we have found mistakes there in the past, but they're always pretty quick to correct it. Yeah. You got your contract comes the fun part. There's a lot of people that are starting to now do travel nursing and live in their RV. So sometimes it can be an all day process just tr trying to find housing or campsites um, for us to stay in for the 13 week contract. We always do 13 week contract to begin with. That's what my agency does. And then if we decide to extend, then we can negotiate how long we want to extend. We don't always extend for another 13 weeks. We often do four, six weeks, just depending on the hospital's need and depending on how much more activities we feel like that we want to go and explore here if there's enough to still do um, in this location before we move on. And when you book your uh, when you book your campground, again, that's sometimes the hardest part. We have been fortunate to find them and sometimes we have to talk our way into those campgrounds. A, a really great example is the campground we're at had a huge waiting list. Uh, the only reason we got in here was because the manager, her first concert happened to be a Brian Adams concert. Listen, if she wants to let me in because my name is Brian Adams, I am okay with that. But use anything you can to your advantage to get in. Uh, it's been great. Once we get here, you know, most of the campgrounds are really nice, but you have to be really friendly talk your way in sometimes because a lot of them do have waiting lists for people to get in because a lot of people have a lot of monthly people in there and they don't understand that we don't want to live here for a year or two we just really want to be here for three months or so to complete the contract but and especially during the summer it's harder because a lot of destination locations do not rent monthly in the summer because that's when they make more money on their uh, nightly and weekenders right but now do you sign your contract before you have those arrangements set up Typically, we would say no. We like to have our housing, make sure that we have, you know, a good campground to stay at because we do need to have full hookups. We need to have 50 amp to run our camper. We also need decent Wi-Fi because our kids are homeschooled and my husband runs his business completely off the internet. So we don't want to just stay at, you know, a campground that doesn't offer these amenities. 
so we typically say no. You have to be real flexible when you're doing this lifestyle. So there are times that you might not know till a week or two weeks out if you're going to get a position or not. So if, if you're a planner, if you need to know two, three months out, this might not be for you. So yeah. It works so out. You just got to be flexible. You, you do have to sort of go with the flow. Don't overthink it or overstress it too much. Yeah. And at, uh, But that's part of the lifestyle. Don't, don't worry about it so much. It's um, You meet new people everywhere you go. You meet, uh, you get to see cool things everywhere you go. So it's mm -hmm. just, just part of the deal. And that is one thing that, you know, Brian May brings up a good point. So I usually like to start submitting about six weeks out from the end of my contract. Now, is this always the best thing to do? Not always. If you really are wanting a certain spot or you really want to be at the beach or you really want to be in the mountains, like whatever it might be that you really want, you know, sometimes it is better to wait till like the two weeks before your contract's over because these people are knowing that you're gonna be available soon. And so sometimes that will boost you up to the front of the line. Um, you know, can I get her in here sooner? Um, absolutely. So it's just really trying to decide and play, you know, play, either play it safe or play it, you know, to where you really wanna go. But I really truly believe that there's so many jobs out there that you're not going to go without. You just got to be flexible about what shift you want to work and where you want to go. And so that's usually the, the sum of it. Well, um, and another thing you got to, there are areas of the country that pay more than others. Um, for example, Florida in the winter doesn't typically pay as much as some other areas because everybody wants to be in Florida in the winter. Uh, we have found areas around Denver and Colorado don't pay as much because everybody wants to visit there. So um, if you're in it solely for the money, there's some places that are not going to give you as much money. Uh, we're in it, don't get me wrong, we need the paycheck. We're not independently wealthy, we need the money. But we're also in it for the adventure. So we're not always necessarily looking for the best paycheck if it gets us to a location that we really want to explore and visit. But keep those in mind when you're looking. Uh, um, so now, you got your contract. So Haya has a whole separate team that works with you. You have a onboarding team member that will totally guide you all the way through the steps of making sure that everything is in place for you to start that day one. Now I have had, ran into travel nurses where they get their day one and something is totally screwed up and they cannot start that day. Either their onboarding person did not get all their stuff into place or something is missing from their profile. I cannot say that this has happened with Aya. Aya's had a fabulous reputation. We've been with them for almost 10 months now and we've never once had any issues with that. Um, so. The, each hospital is going to require different things. So some hospitals, Brian was talking about the test before. So some will be like all of your health stream stuff, all your stuff that you do yearly at the hospital, um, like your OSHA and your fire, like all those tests that you have to take. Typically you have to do all those for each hospital. Then there's the prophecy test, which is the one that Brian was telling you about. <laughs> it's the, my least favorite because it's timed and it's pretty in detail, um, but it's not been so bad. And then sometimes they will tell you that you have actually need extra certification. Like for example, this job they told me I had to have PALS for. Well, we were literally leaving our last assignment in two days when I found out that I had to go take PALS. So I spent all night working on that certification and then went to class the very next day in order for us to pull out the following day after that to get that. Oh, so, you know, sometimes it does come down to a crunch and you just gotta do what you gotta do. The other thing is, is that you do have to require, are required to have a drug screen. Every, t um, every time that you take a new assignment, anywhere you go, that has to be done within 30 days. <laughs> <laughs> so drug test, usually your TB test, um, colorblind test, your eye exam, and a physical. Um, so usually the physical I think has to be done once a year. I think it just really depends on what the hospital requires. So 
you know, anyway, your onboarding person will send all this information to you. The hospital will set a deadline for it to all be done. That's usually within like 10 days before your start date. So then that way they know that all your clearance is finished and then they will know that you're ready to come. So then when do you find out all your information about starting that job? So sometimes this can be tricky. Sometimes it's not until the Friday before when you start Monday. So I have gotten to my location and then find out, okay, I have to be at orientation at eight o'clock the next morning. Every hospital is different as far as what they require for hospital orientation. Sometimes it's three hours. Sometimes it's two weeks, a whole week and then another orientation week. So it just really varies. There can be one day on the unit. There can be three days on the unit but they're expected that you know this profession and that you are ready to hit the floor running. That's why they need you there. And, and that's one thing I'll speak about, because Amy, I will tell you what, her least favorite thing is orientation, is sitting in a classroom and hearing the orientation on the sexual rules for each thing and hearing that over and over again every three months. She hates that. I don't get it. I'm glad I don't have to do it every three months. But keep that in mind, you're gonna start a new job, uh, a lot of these hospitals have travelers that are great travelers and some of them have travelers that are bad travelers so that's the to me that's the hardest part for Amy is when she goes in each time she has to prove on each new unit that she actually knows her stuff on what she's doing because they've had good and bad travelers so you're sort of starting over each time it's like starting a new job you're learning maybe some of their systems a little different how they do stuff a little different um, again that's part of just being flexible and part of the job you're, you're there to make money so you can travel the country. We talk to a lot of travelers that get to a hospital and they love it so much that they get hired on and stay there. I mean, that happens all the time. And, and it's good for experience, I think. It is. I mean, yeah. your resume is getting all kinds of stuff added to it in, in different places. So yeah. uh, just remember, it's about the experiences. There's, there's going to be good and bad things about travel nursing, just like there are if you have a job in your sticks and bricks house right. back home. So I would like to add to that is that, you know, usually the first two weeks of your assignment is obviously, you know, you're in that learning phase. You're trying to learn everything, how it works, what's their policy and procedures, you know, what is the staff like. So those first two weeks are kind of stressful, you know, as you're learning everything. But the, another thing I want you all to keep in mind when traveling, um, remember what the adventure is about. Yeah. That, that, that's the thing, keep that in focus. What's the adventure always about? Uh, and this is just how we make a living on the road. Yeah, um, my t-shirt business, right. we, we ship all over. Amy travels, there's lots of way. We've met people who do IT work. We've met people who do YouTube blogs. Um, honestly, YouTube is a little harder to get into. It, it takes a little bit more to start making a steady income. There's some people that do very well at it. Uh, maybe one day we'll get a little income from YouTube. If we do, bonus. Um, we have met people who are contractors. We have met pipe fitters. We meet people who are retired and do work camp and travel from place to place and get work camping opportunities. Guys, if you want this lifestyle and you want to do it, there's so many ways to make money. You just have to be willing to sort of step outside of your comfort zone and try some new stuff. All right, so we've given a lot of information on exactly what to do travel nursing some different ways that can be made money can be made on the road we're gonna put some links down below we'll put it to IO Healthcare we'll put it to our t-shirt business um, if you need t-shirts for your travel company for your family call us man we'd love to do it for you um, how I said yeah oh <laughs> yeah, yeah. Call. T-shirts. Um, if you have any questions uh, message us talk to us we're glad to answer questions we're glad to help you out uh, and, and we'd love to hear if some different ways that you all make money um, especially you know the only downside to the way we make money right now is in we're in one spot three months at a time which it's good because we get to explore the area the bad thing is we don't get to move quite as fast it's going to take us longer to get all the way around the country so if you found out a way we can travel nurse and move every two weeks let us know <laughs> Um, have anything else to add, honey? No, it's just if you have any questions, you know, about travel nursing, then I'm glad to help out. Um, there is a Facebook page that's called Travel Nursing RV. I believe that's what it was. Anyway. Um, she don't know. <laughs>
<laughs> that's been very helpful. Um, so, you know, it's just kind of nice to connect with other full-time RV or tra travel nurses. Um, and we are also a member of full-time family members, which is also a very helpful resource to meet up with other people along the way. So Yeah, so they have groups for people who are trying to do YouTube channels, people who are filmers, people who do photography. It's connect with other people who are doing things that you like. Yeah. The support out here in the RV community is way better, mm -hmm. way, way better than it ever was in a stick and bricks house. So. That is one thing that I found that I just wasn't expecting was just the community that's out here of other full-time RVers. It's like until you're living it, you don't really know that it's out there. And so I just really have felt like we've connected with other families just so, you know, that want to live this lifestyle and really have a lot of the same values and beliefs that we have. So anyway, we hope you enjoyed it. Hit that subscribe, blah, blah. Hit that subscribe button <laughs> and like us. And, and don't forget to hit that little subscribe bell so we'll yeah. notify you when new videos come out. We have a new one come out every week. Look forward to next week. Have a good one. See you on the road. All right, welcome to the Life Free Amanda. <laughs> <laughs> he can't make it through mm. one time. All right. All right go. Welcome to the Life Free Amanda. <laughs> Do you know what it's called? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Ready? <laughs>